Hello and welcome back to my overview of the 53D series. We've already been looking at a lot of stuff to do with this device, first time set up, mapped network drives, and how to create the perfect backup solution. But today I want to talk about mounting. Now, mounting different kinds of drive, mounting a NAS to be seen on another NAS, or creating a drive that's visible on another system can be quite complex. That said, the technology has moved forward substantially over the last few years and now it's considerably more user friendly than ever before to a point now where there are dedicated applications available on your NAS system for different kinds of scenario where you might mount an area of storage so in the case of this device this is the 53d or the 6 bay today i'm going to be showing you guys three different ways in which you can mount different kinds of popular storage and this is going to be using cloud services and using local NAS services and this is three of many ways in which you can do it on top of that I will be doing a few shout outs at the end to particular tools that are useful for third-party cloud services and th third-party access to data so what we're going to look at today is the means with which you can mount external data onto the NAS and make the NAS become an external data source to another server or NAS. But I've gone on long enough, let's get straight into it. Now, this is featuring the 60, uh, 653D, but it will work on largely any Intel-powered NAS, and I'm mainly focusing on the 53D series. The first tool I want to look at is probably the most interesting, and that one is Hybrid Mount. Now, Hybrid Mount, released towards the end of 2019, has had lots of updates, and it allows you to um, effectively see an area of storage on your NAS that isn't on your NAS as if it was local. So to put it into a little bit more context, here is File Station. File Station here has lots of files and folders here on the side, and all of these folders live on the volume and indeed the storage pool of the NAS. It means that if I want to use any of these applications here, music station, video station, photo station, um, surveillance, if I want to use it for downloads, if I want to use it for email, if I want to use any of the proprietary applications from QNAP, I can access these folders. Now, I can use certain tools like Hybrid Backup Sync uh, that will allow me to see cloud storage. These are ones that allow me to create a backup tool, but it will still always treat that external cloud storage, be it Google Drive, Dropbox, One.com, or something bigger like an, a, um, an Amazon AES blob or stuff like that. These things that it will only treat as remote. It won't treat them as if they're local and let you use your local services in order to interact with them. Indeed, if you go to the App Center, you are able to see there are some dedicated applications that allow you to synchronize or back up to cloud service providers. If we go to the All App section, there are some cloud services, which you, such as Elephant Drive here, that you can bolt on that storage to your NAS, but it will still always be treated as if it's external. Hybrid mount allows you to interact with this data on external sources as if it was local and therefore utilize your QNAP NAS and its software accordingly. The all QNAP systems arrive with at least two licenses and you can add more if you so choose and you're going to need a license for each one of those services. So they come into two different variants, remote devices and cloud services. Cloud services cover things like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc., and remote devices are other file servers and more. You can even create cached spaces using the file gateway, and this is the big difference due to intelligent caching. It basically sees areas of storage on those cloud platforms and it allows your local system to interact with it and it doesn't trick the NAS into thinking it's local but it's treating it as if it's local nevertheless so now let's add a cloud service here now as you can see you can do a file station mount and a file station mount will add this area of storage into file station so you can interact with it but you can also create the file cloud gateway. And the file cloud gateway allows you to kind of create a portal access point between the two. 
So let's go with Google Drive. Now I've already linked this throwaway Google Drive account with this NAS in another area when we were doing our video about hybrid backup sync. But for now, let's link that NAS compares Gmail throwaway account with hybrid mount. It will then allow us to mount this storage here. So let's have a look, that's the connection name there. We can say about uh, what we want our policy with regards to uploading the files to and from, and we can click next. It's now gonna create this cached space. Now, as you can see, we've already got the cached space living there on the cloud. We've got to name it, there's our storage pool there, and there's the free space on the cloud area. If we look at the volume, we can look at how much space, and we can see that there's only 6.7 gig available. So let's do five gigabytes of storage. But local caching, because of the total amount of storage on my NAS, it's clearly showing that there's not enough space on this cloud pool for our file gateway. So we will have to utilize a bigger space for a file gateway. Now, if you are using bigger cloud services, then that's where that would come into play. Now, if we go back, we can look at mounting that cloud storage on FileStation. Now, on FileStation, we're going to do exactly the same thing once again. We're going to go into the Google Drive. It's then going to double click, uh, double check, sorry, that we want to mount that storage again. So we'll go in with the hybrid mount. We select the account. We grant it permission. We click allow. It then passes through. We can see the Gmail account. We click create. And now it's mounted this Google Drive into FileStation. Now we've mounted this cloud storage space as well as enabled caching there in the background, we're now able to take advantage of those applications. Now, if you are going to go ahead and do that and utilize a lot of the QNAP services and apps to utilize that cloud storage as if it was local, head into the multimedia console first. And this is gonna be for, obviously, the multimedia services. Head to the content management tab, and from there you can see which folders you've assigned for each kind of device. Uh, so in the case of QMaggy, the photo recognition tool, click edit. And then from there, you'll see that along with the folder that we've already got pre-selected, we've now got access to the Google Drive tab. We can click there, and now we can add Google Drive, if we so choose, to QMaggy. And now it will index the cloud services for that photo recognition too. We can click apply, and now QMaggy will sequence those photos too. The same goes for Photo Station, Video Station, Music Station, and more. If we utilize Video Station, click Edit. Once again, select the Google Drive. We could even go a little deeper and go into the individual folders if we so choose within the My Drive, and select individual ones if we so choose from the collection, and we can then add that multimedia if we so choose for the QNAP app to utilize. And it's quite a handy tool because it allows you to mount all of that storage that isn't necessarily on the NAS. Now bear in mind, you can do this with other NASs too. If you've got the IP or the internet access point of that NAS via a remote connection, you can enter the address there, it will then find the URL and then mount that storage and make it visible locally. So all you need to do is get hold of the IP. And for those that aren't aware, QFinder Pro, the IP is right there. You can just copy that number of a different NAS and enter it into there. Now, I will be doing a full cover video on hybrid mount since it's come out of beta very, very soon. Also in conjunction with Q uh, Q1, I'll talk about it later on. But I do recommend this tool for those that want to either mount cloud storage or other NASes as visible on a local NAS so that your services can take advantage of it. The next one to talk about is BoxSafe. Now, BoxSafe is still in beta. We have got an upcoming overview video of that, but I'll give you a summary. BoxSafe gives you the ability to synchronize G Suite and Office 365 cloud services. Why would you take advantage of that? Well, for businesses that take advantage of G Suite with its list of Google Mail, Google Docs, its video chat applications, its messaging, its email, its Office Docs and more, you know that all of those services can be incredibly useful and cost effective to a business. But if you lose internet connectivity, a lot of the time what you're doing 
cannot be actioned. You can't access a lot of the online assets from the Google or Microsoft servers. And ultimately, you're left at a significant disadvantage. And that goes for your backups too. If you use BoxSafe, you're able to synchronize your G, your G Suite or Office 365 server with all of its accounts, all of its email, all of its permissions, all of its settings and more with your NAS. And moving forward, you can then, when accessing your G Suite or Office 365 services via your domain and your account, if you lose internet connectivity, it's not the end of the world because you will be interacting with all of the data from that server on the NAS. And that data will be laid out in all of the files and folders and accounts and emails and more in the way that you're used to. You simply have to enter your connection details for your domain name, your email address, and the service key that's inclusive of your G Suite account. Same goes for your Office 365 account. Authorize it and then it will create synchronization between the NAS and that online service. Remember, this is not acting as an alternative to your cloud service package from G Suite or Office 365. This is acting as a mounted, synchronized fail safe of that data. If you've got many, many staff or clients that are utilizing the services that you've included in your bot, in your Office 365 or G Suite account, and you're worried about losing internet connectivity, passing over those all of that information through the NAS, making sure that it's all synchronized locally, means that in the event of a um, losing data, uh, losing internet connectivity, all of that information is accessible and still utilized in live real time via your NAS. And then when the internet connectivity is reestablished, the BoxSafe app and your NAS will reconnect all of the changes that have happened in the meantime. It also allows you to do much faster recreations and changing of rules on the fly of large heaps of data. On top of that, you can keep a longer term record of all of the data, all the emails, everything that's been sent from within your G Suite or Office 365 account a great deal more easily thanks to this app. You can keep a great deal more long-term backup data without utilizing the smaller subscription data limitations of these cloud services. So if you want to mount your G Suite or Office 365 entire account system and applications, BoxSafe is definitely the one for you. Now, the last one I want to talk about is Virtual JBOD. Now, Virtual JBOD is the ability to make um, localized storage mounted and accessible on other platforms. And this is NAS to NAS and NAS to cloud. So, case in point, say you want to use an area of storage on this NAS and mount it as an accessible storage area for another NAS, QNAP or otherwise, or on a Google Drive or on a Dropbox. This is how you would go about it. It allows you to create um, an area of virtual JBOD storage, and it can work in both directions from the NAS. So say, for example, you want to use the cloud storage. So you want to use, again, a Google Cloud. You can then mount that Google Cloud storage as a large blob of storage that's usable by the NAS. This isn't using subscription services and files and just general data storage we are talking large blob spaces of data now it does work in both directions as mentioned you can create cloud storage that um, is visible as a local um, unified storage area on your system too it can it covers a number of different services out there you can create the service in both directions and moreover thanks to increased speeds on local area networks surpassing 1 GBE, and now we're hitting 10 GBE, 20 GBE, and of course, fiber channeling, there's lots of ways to make that storage and that virtual JBOD area a great deal more useful. And those are the three main ways in which you can mount cloud services and NAS services to support one another and make sure your data is spread evenly 
in the in the event of disconnection from one or both now moving forward from this let's give a quick shout out to the applications which are still quite useful in both first and third party you can look at some of the applications just head over to the app center and some of them are more useful than others those of you that want to utilize space on your local nas storage and ultimately give people an area of storage to play with without utilizing the QNAP's own file system, I recommend Own Cloud. It's a little older than a number of the apps. It hasn't been updated since last year, but installing this application, which is completely for free, allows you to create bespoke um, single point of access uh, URLs that you can send to clients, to businesses, to friends and family to have their own area of storage with its own dedicated list of tabs and file management accessible via the web browser it's incredibly straightforward and there's even a client tool that they can install locally now they could just use the qnap tools but maybe you don't want to give them access to the qnap user interface and you want to add a degree of separation and ultimately give them access to an area of cloud storage own cloud although a little bit rudimentary will give you a straightforward way to do that next if you want to go back to the business we can talk about object storage now, object storage for those that take advantage of S3 and other large-scale blob storage areas will want to take advantage of this tool. It allows you to ultimately mount that storage and synchronize them back up to and from. And if you are taking advantage of more virtual instances and definitely hyperscale environments, this may well be a good tool to add another layer of connectivity to those large online areas. Bear in mind, however, though, you will have to make sure you have got the external storage and external object storage ready to go, as this is a tool that is heavily reliant on having those assets already in place. Finally, if you're running a business and a lot of your services have now moved on to an internet uh, level access, such as those that have moved over from traditional phone lines onto uh, using VoIP phones, or those that have now incorporated uh, video chat services into their home and business environment or those that have got home offices particularly during covid um, we have noticed a lot of people have suddenly leapt onto the idea of sd wan these are dedicated network portal access points with the intelligent or with an intelligent means to control the network environment and make sure that prioritized services for your businesses aren't affected when you've got busy network traffic. QNAP currently have a beta out there um, for called QUWAN, and it gives you the ability to um, leverage the hardware architecture of your NAS to work as an intelligent wireless um, network, um, as a wired network environment, and allow you to make sure that more priority services will switch on the fly. Now, we have talked about SD-WAN here on the channel before. Once you're setting the, your devices up for the very first time, and we've already created our account for this NAS previously, it's worth highlighting that setting this up is straightforward and it works out a hell of a lot cheaper than some other SD-WAN appliances. QNAP have got a huge array of SD-WAN hardware coming out soon. And if you do have, again, devices such as, mobile, um, as VoIP phones, and VoIP hardware, uh, cameras, speakers, that sort of thing, you may will, will see this software being quite useful. All it needs you to do when installing the software for the first time is assign which LAN ports on the device are utilized for wide area networks, ultimately where your internet comes in, and local area networks. Now, using it on traditional NATs like this isn't gonna be as useful because it doesn't have a lot of LAN ports. But given the presence of the QNAP Guardian in now two versions, as well as a lot of the intelligent switches that they're releasing, the inclusion of the SD-WAN software with QU-WAN from QNAP is gonna be very useful for businesses that want to take advantage of an intelligent wireless area network system where there isn't going to be network problems with VoIP phones not having enough network connectivity when they're ringing as well as other services that are going to be draining your network environment like surveillance and more. But I'm going to wrap things up here. I do have dedicated videos on most of the apps we talked about today already out and coming very, very soon. And when it comes to mounting local and remote access storage over the internet or the network, QNAP are probably one of the best brands out there for it. There's a lot of apps to choose from, but there's almost certainly a tool out there best suited to your needs. 
If you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more about how to adapt a QNAP into your work or home environment, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.